play is where children do lots of learning. It's, it's not as if there's play and learning. There's not division. Play is learning. If we really want Scotland to be the best place in the world to grow up, let's do things for children to make their life better and their futures better. It's now becoming vital that we put principles into practice, ring fence that period between three and seven for proper play-based kindergarten type education and make sure that what is actually a brilliant national curriculum, curriculum for excellence, actually gets into effect and gets started right. There really is no basis, I think, in my view, for starting schooling in a formal sense at the age of five and pursuing that through the taught experience rather than the experience of learning. Um, and I'm not aware of any research which says, yep, five's the time to go. Somehow we seem to have bought in as parents sometimes um, and as professionals and as, as uh, policy makers to the idea that the sooner you start and the harder you push, the quicker you'll get there. But in fact, the evidence, uh, uh, the research evidence suggests completely the opposite. The, the school starting age of uh, five, or indeed now very often four, it only happens in 12% of countries in the world. 66% uh, of, of countries send their children to school at six, and 22%, and this includes the most successful countries at the moment in OECD educational surveys, they start at seven. So we are very odd in many ways in starting so young, and in fact all of that 12% are UK or ex-British colonies. It's to do with a decision made by Victorian politicians back in the 1860s. Nothing to do with education, a lot to do with economics. Now, there is research and evidence that if you put lots of children in a small room together, that there, there is stress in their brain. You know, their brains don't develop as efficiently and as beautifully as they could do because there's just so much going on around them. If all the things that we were doing to protect our children were working, we wouldn't be seeing the issues that we've got with mental health, with self-harming, as I said, with risk-taking behaviour. If it was working, that wouldn't be happening. And if it's not working, then surely to goodness, we need to rethink how we're conceiving childhood. It's true, there's an attainment gap. Scotland isn't doing as well on attainment as some other countries. And we would like ourselves to do better. So at the moment, the proposal is, we'll have more testing. What we're doing at the moment is not working. And it's just foolhardy to say, well, what we're doing at the moment is not working, so let's do more of it. Let's bring it forward or try harder. And we need to step aside from that and say, let's do something different. We've got stuck in this way of thinking. And the people who know about the children are getting increasingly concerned. I don't think we're making the difference we need to make for young people growing up in disadvantage. Um, I don't even think we're making enough of a difference for young people who are not growing up in disadvantage in terms of helping them to fulfil their potential and helping us as a nation to fulfil our potential. How we think about our children, how we look after our children and, and neglect of our children is not confined to those people over there who live in poor areas. There are lots and lots of well-off people who um, don't pay as much attention to their kids as they should. The most valuable thing we give our children is our time. Now, in Scotland we've done some fantastic things. We actually have play built into current policies. So we have play-based learning. We often hear the phrase, learning through play. But I get entertained by that because play is okay as long as we are learning. As long as learning is the outcome, play can be the vehicle. But the idea that play on its own would be enough makes us nervous because play sounds frivolous and fun. And so I think that it's our ideas about play that are part of the anxiety about the upstart movement. I think there are four main reasons that Upstart's important at the moment. Um, the first is simply that we're not doing as well as we could be in Scotland educationally, um, languishing a bit in the charts. Second is that we have a widening gap in attainment between the rich and poor. The third is not an educational issue particularly, it's to do with children's health. 
Uh, we've seen a lot of developmental conditions over the last 30 years, but now there's also a rising tide of mental health problems, and we know we have a, a problem with obesity. Um, and that's connected with the fourth reason, which is the huge decline over the last, gosh, just really 20 years in children's outdoor active social play, something that is vitally important to them biologically, um, desperately important for their physical and mental health, but also, it turns out, hugely significant for their success in the educational system. So it's to do with the decline in play that it's become a big issue. Nature creates space for us to learn in. In schools we create spaces for ourselves to teach in. And that seemed to me to capture an awful lot of the debate about outdoor learning. That there's a real opportunity and a different kind of space to learn in a different way. Um, working outdoors poses all kinds of challenges. Obviously if you're outdoors for eight and a half hours and maybe it's raining for most of that, you will learn an enormous amount of resilience. All around us things are changing the whole time and there's an adaptability to the child to having to change to the environment and to one another. And, and, and these, are, these are skills that I don't think you can get in any other way apart from being a child. What we need to look for right at the beginning is a change, um, not in terms of children's entitlement to education, um, but in ethos. So that the principles, the very sound principles upon which good nursery practice is based, are expand, extended for another couple of years. We can't do that simply through the pursuit of attainment, particularly from the early stages. We need to think more about care, about innovation and about imagination and how we make our young people learners. Give all children two years more play um, and there'll be a much more level playing field for all of them, as well as happier children and um, better chance of lifelong well-being and um, disposition to learn and hopefully fewer physical and mental health problems. If you see the problems occurring in adolescence, it might not occur to you that that could have something to do with children's experiences when they were eight or six or two or six months old. And yet that's what the science tells us. There has been a piece of research in New Zealand that looked at children who started to learn at five and children who started to learn at seven, and by 11 it's evened out. Except that the ones who start later tend to be um, better sort of disposed to the process. Children who have a rich reserve of early play experiences um, use their bodies quite differently from children who've not done much playing. They have a really different relationship with their bodies. They know them very well and what they're capable of. And why this matters is that it imbues them with a certain confidence and an ability to adapt to change and to changing circumstances. Um, and furthermore, children who've done lots of creative playing, lots of imagining, pretending, listening to stories, making up stories, they're actually also more creative in their thinking. So they're capable from a very early age of understanding quite complex concepts and um, seeing things from other people's point of view and considering alternatives, weighing up alternative solutions to problems. And these skills and these attributes, confidence, adaptability, uh, empathy, creativity, are just the skills and attributes we want our children to have. Um, not just when they're children, but as they grow into adulthood and they're the skills and attributes that employers are looking for in their workforce. So the reason that I'm supporting Upstart is because I want all our children to have access to those rich early play experiences with all the benefits that that has to offer. You know, it's not that we're slowing anybody down, it's just that we're preparing them to, we're preparing them for life, we're preparing them to learn better and make better use of it. Um, because they'll need all of these other skills in order to make, make good decisions about themselves. And that, the good decisions may be about, well, what am I going to do with my life? There's now a huge body of research based on clinical evidence that play, in all its forms, is an essential component of health for adults and for all of us throughout our lifespans into old age. 
um, and that's irrefutable. One of the things I would say that underpins everything the Violence Reduction Unit did from the start, none of this was, you know, uh, um, let's try if this works. The evidence was there. The evidence about early years is profound. The economic argument is profound, the moral argument, the scientific argument, the biological argument, it's all sound stuff. We need to act on that information and act on it early. So rather than waiting until we're grown up, and it's difficult for us to change habits and change behaviours, why not let children do what they do naturally, play, and um, develop those skills and attributes right from the beginning with all the protective effects that they have for their health in the long run. I was a detective for most of my 39 years. Um, follow the evidence. Follow the evidence. You'll never go wrong if you follow the evidence. That's how it works. That's how it's meant to work. That's why we do it. So if the evidence says that's what we should be doing, why are we not doing it? Ha <laughs> ha